Innovation. 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 Various others, public and private sector, a lot from the NHS, just sharing what they're trying to do. Um, and, and I do believe this idea of it's not just us and we're unique, but actually everyone shares the same kinds of innovation challenges. The arena might be different, but the underlying challenges are very similar. The idea of giving people a little bit of space to try something different out. So there's a path, there's a route, there's a sense of support, and also there is some time. So don't just do the job you're told to do, play around with it. You do need to step back, say what else is going on, how else might, may, might we attack this? And that is um, trading off productive time for thinking time. Dance Wars Weekend, yeah, it's a space to to try new things, we don't have an expectation that all the down tools with project will be successful. Our best work happens when we're in a team. So we want to give everybody the moment of at the same moment in time. So rather than saying, look, just spend some time as you see fit. It's like, look, we're all getting together. We're going to try and make something special happen here. So if you were to go downstairs now, because it's down tools week right now, uh, you'll see people pitching ideas, uh, trying to persuade people to come and work with them. So, the team you assemble is how good you are at persuading people you've got a compelling idea. Try doing a different job sometimes, so if someone, a tester might do some development or um, a developer might do some design work. To work with completely different people, they might work, teams would sort of um, swap around. Computer, did you not? You know, it's about the autonomy to work on what they want to work on uh, and it's things like that, that that I think drive real engagement rather than, you know, whether or not we give a pension and Down Tools Week I think is, is a really good example mm -hmm. of that. But uh, more and more people from around the business often get involved to either help the sort of input into some projects, um, mm -hmm. give some new ideas. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of ideas bubbling under the, under the surface. So often this is about people scratching itches, you know, being, being given the space to do things that they've seen as an opportunity mm -hmm. for a while. We provide incredibly good quality coffee but everyone has to go to the same spot to have that coffee so they have to bump into each other but we've got a fantastic chef who cooks amazing food and everyone comes down to the canteen to eat together so there's lots of places where people bump into each other for no very good reason where they can start interacting and talking with each other and knowing each other and hopefully creating moments of serendipity so great things can happen. beavering away at their science um, and for innovation to work best you know you need people collaborating and talking to one another and engaging with people outside of their their sphere we actually took a, a normal Met Office room it was just a, 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 an empty office um, and we made it into a cinema and we had popcorn and we had ice cream um, and we made it into quite an event for them. Um, and one of the reasons for doing that was that we wanted to show the importance of trying to do things differently. We we'll never know what would have been said if it weren't for our chief executive standing up and essentially saying, uh, this is great, well done, I fully support this. We then followed that up with a series of workshops and what we developed was a vision. And this vision was really focused on individuals um, and it was kind of in a way it was a strategy an innovation strategy but it, it, it was more focused about how we would like individuals to come to work at the Met office and how we would like them to feel when they're at work. So giving a line manager that sense of it can work and giving them some direct experience of it perhaps giving them sort of a reminder of or perhaps a taste of some of the tools that can all help with the process. It 
it doesn't need to be business as usual. But there is a danger that business as usual means turning the handle and getting stale and carrying on doing, shifting the culture to here and then just carry on doing that forevermore and not evolving and changing. Um, so the way we are set up now is that the main projects that we started, um, you know, the, the internal crowdsourcing, um, the, the training courses to training creative behaviours, for example, the business is responsible for making sure those happen but actually most of the activity is still carried out by volunteers who are passionate about it. Support it, encourage it, let it happen and don't overmanage it. Give, give people time and space to be involved. Make them feel that it is part of their day job, not an add-on. So, you know, it's a positive thing towards achieving targets or whatever, bettering the Met Office. see you know the directors having meetings out on the street or whatever or being seen to be innovative engaging innovation so that kind of walk walk the walk don't just talk the talk I would say join in it really is for everyone we, we've had we actually had our government services director come to one of the hackathons that we were hosting in London and he ended up sat cross-legged on the floor taking apart computers and building things and just just you know couldn't help but just join in and, and be part of it I think you do need a focus, I think you need somebody to sort of join the dots and make sure things keep on going. The long term sustainability of, of high involvement innovation will require pol policy deployment. But I think the main way of getting around it was to try and educate the managers as to what we were trying to do um, and that it wasn't just a a silly little sideline which some people saw it as. There's probably about over a hundred volunteers across everything and these are people that are just doing it in addition to their day job but their managers recognise the value of how they get actual facilitation skills and they can use that in their teams. And that really then comes back to the, the, the role of senior managers as directors, not as the ones who have to do the innovation but the ones who create the structures and that gives a sense of strategic direction within which people can do what they're naturally good at so they can start to work alone but also begin to work together and you can have this notion of shared creativity and building on projects you know, rather like in Facebook good idea I like that and why don't you do that so you kind of get this this shadow innovation system so potentially both the reach and the richness of the innovation projects is enhanced and if you haven't got the basics in place it's just jazzy new technology it won't get you anywhere Everybody in the business has a responsibility and, and a desire to share their ideas and um, inspiration. Uh, I think that kind of thing, um, whether we're talking about engaging employees in the, this, this kind of process or in what's classically called intrapreneurship, people coming up with bright ideas for new products and services, that very much is the model which does work and there's a lot of evidence for it.
The culture of Innocent is very entrepreneurial, it's very new, everyone is encouraged to actually find and bring new things, whether that's a new idea of doing a process, whether it's coming up with a recipe idea or a new ingredient. And the number of emails that I get from people saying, oh, I've been on holiday, I've seen this amazing new fruit. Have you tried it? What does it taste like in a, in a smoothie? The power of um, high involvement innovation, as, as I'd call it, is we're talking about a lot of people contributing their little bits every day so it adds up and as long as you've got the alignment as long as you've got the sense that everyone's pulling in the same direction and all of those innovations are adding up it does contribute at bottom line some significant improvements the group that we now have running um, i think we all know each other well enough that uh, that rank within those walls doesn't doesn't matter it's left at the door of first new terms and all those sort of things I have no doubt that if we were then called to an operational incident when we went out, all of those people would revert into knowing who should be doing what. So that's taken some time, uh, it takes a bit of trust. The important thing for me is that you've got an environment where people are doing their job at any level, have a, a process that they can thrash about ideas without fear of criticism, without immediately knocking them on the head. When people find they can do that, if you start looking at the links to employee engagement, you can find it raises job satisfaction, people's motivation, um, even wellness in the workplace. Unsurprisingly, we've got some budgetary challenges and that's hit our vehicle fleet, but where you might see that there's a lack is within our neighbourhood teams in the community policing. So, um, with the lack of vehicles, we need to do something else. So, that's when we turned to electric bikes and said, well, is there something there? Uh, and the first thing you've got to do is just give it a try. And, that, and that's exactly what the, the ethos of our innovations are about. Why not give it a whirl? Why not? With the bike, I've been able to get out to areas that I never thought I'd be able to manage on a bike. On a normal push bike, there's no way I could have done it. The mileage on them is phenomenal. We haven't found anything that would stop us using it. The officers love it, the public love it, kids love seeing them. And the best thing is everyone remembers a police officer or pieces on a bike. It's about bringing some different skills and writing up a really comprehensive business plan so we can go back to our senior officers and say, well look, this is why this is a good idea. Can we take it to the next stage? innovation itself is not a one-off hit and then ah, we can relax we've done it it's actually a continuous challenge um, an attack on costs an attack on quality issues an attack on service whatever the strategic objectives are and, and there's there's more than enough problems facing any organization to keep the innovation agenda full